So controlling fuel pressure is the thing that we think about. It's the thing we need to pay attention to, of course. Uh, but more important, and really a big point of this seminar is, is not that, because most of you understood that. We have to maintain design pressure. The question is more how do we lose control of it? Because it happens. It happens all the time. We have to maintain control of this design pressure, whatever it may be. If it's a factory system that's intentionally variant, we have to maintain control of that. If it's a mechanical regulator that's supposed to increase pressure with boost, we have to maintain control of that. And the real issues come not in the fact that we don't understand how to control it, it comes from all the things that screw us up in the way. There are lots of little things. So the first is pressure drop in the system. If you monitor fuel pressure, you'll see that when you're using the greatest amount of fuel, it always drops off just a little bit. You can calculate different. You can say that it should always be three bar, 43 and a half PSI, whatever your target is. Hey, when I'm under boost at the top end, the high RPM, when my, when my fuel requirements are greatest, it's not 43 and a half, it's only 42. Maybe it's only 40, maybe it's only 25, I don't know. In either case, you'll see some drop off there. That certainly qualifies as having lost control. Whether or not it's an amount that matters is for the tuner to decide. In any case, we have to understand what kind of things can cause those problems. The first major issue is outlet restriction. When I say outlet restriction, I mean restrictions on the outlet side of the pump. So we have this little guy right here, which is a drilled 90 degree fitting. When I say drilled, what I mean is I came up with a drill bit and drilled this way and this way, and there's a sharp 90 inside of there. That certainly creates restriction in flow. If you string enough of those together, you probably can lose 20 PSI when you get under boost. Clearly, outlet restrictions like that are not a good thing. Hose ends with a smooth bed clearly offer far less restriction. And in the quest for reducing restriction on the pump outlet, people have gone to some extremes. When I said extreme, I should have said stupid. Let me give you an example. Somebody has decided that this contraption would be a wonderful thing for me to put on my car. If we feed the fuel rails with all of these different hoses, boy, there's no way we're gonna have any pressure drop there in the system, and my God, you'd probably make 100 more horsepower if you just get out your credit card and buy one of these. Uh, other than bullshit, I can't think of a single way to describe this, and I'll tell you why. It's a V8, uh, it's currently got 8,000 cc injectors in it. If I take all eight of those injectors and I turn them on all of them, it is the equivalent of a single 120,000 diameter jet, like an alcohol jet if you work with public carburetors. So that single 125,000 hole does not care if I got two hoses or four hoses or six hoses. Who does care is the guy that made this thing and said, give me your money. I didn't even bother when I pulled it off the internet to see who made it. I don't care. It's stupid. Unless someone wants to show me data, prove me wrong, I'm going to continue to tell people it's just stupid. Um, I've heard time and time again that the, uh, the fuel rails on such and such a car are only good to 600 horsepower. Apparently that means at 601 the car explodes or goes lean. I don't know exactly what that means, but my point is that those restrictions on the outlet that are often talked about are rarely as big of a problem as you think that they are. If your fuel pressure is dropping off, surely take a look at it and try to figure out why, but don't assume that it's because you need one of these. I don't know what that costs. I should find out who makes it so I can make yet another enemy in the industry. I think that's a good idea. Let me figure out how to back out of here. Now, oh, by the way, there's an interesting piece here, which is the stock fuel run for that car. And you can see the reason that someone would want to buy something else because that's an ugly, ugly part. It's just a silly little stamped steel thing. In fact, if I ask the right guy, he'd probably tell me it's only good for 700 horsepower. I'll have to make 701 and go buy some fuel rails. The fact is, those fuel rails with that little tiny uh, 5 16 inlet will probably flow as much fuel as you can ever make with that motor without shoving the crank out through your own van. That's often the case. The fuel rails are typically designed quite well. In fact, this particular fuel rail that's made out of stamped steel that has a very odd look uh, works somewhat as an accumulator to reduce pulsations because of the way that it flexes when it's in use. So, the auto manufacturers think a great deal about pressure drop and pulsations and things like that. They didn't just slap that together because some guy said, hey, you know, I could, uh, I could stamp that for you and make it cheap, even though that is their goal sometimes. They put some thought into that. So pulling it off to slap that other contraption on there, 
if you want to do it, if you have the extra money, that's okay. I just want to let you know that uh, someone should probably provide you with some real data to show you that that was uh, an important step you really need to take. So I think that officially qualifies as a rant. Did everyone uh, everyone survive that? I don't see anyone arguing. I don't think anybody here sells fuel or else. <laughs>